The challenge for any of the dozen and a half Democrats currently running for the presidential nomination, well, there are many, but bridging the divide, philosophical, cultural, economic, and racial, is close to the top. For Senator Cory Booker, one of two black candidates in the race, attracting black voters, fair or unfair, is seen as critical. But Iowa, black population 3.3 percent, is the first proving ground for any candidacy. It can be tempting for a black candidate to tailor his message to this mostly white audience. But Booker, who spent two grueling days here this week, does the exact opposite. His stump speech, a personal tour of his life as a black kid whose life was changed by white and black unity and love, was delivered to white audiences using the same language as he used with black audiences. And so what was, what's written there, right there where Martin Luther King was slain, are these words from Joseph's brothers. That's a challenge to us in this room, and I think a challenge of this election. It says, behold, here cometh the dreamer. Let us slay him and see what becomes of his dream. What's going to become of our dream? The dreams of our ancestors. The dreams of those who stormed beaches in Normandy and Iwo Jima who fought and died for our dream. What will become of our dream? In the Iowa events, white audiences received Booker warmly. In Des Moines, where the audiences was probably more than 50% black, the tone was at times raucous. One might even say blacker. But the message, universal. What he wants to do is reunify America. And I think in order for us to go forward, we have to. We have to. We don't have to like each other, but we have to love each other enough to get through this. Did you get a sense that this is a guy who could bring these communities together? I do get the sense that Corey could do that. The only thing that I think that would save the current administration to have a re-election chance is if we all stay divided on which pathway do we take to go forward. And if we, if we stay divided like that, we won't come together with a common voice. And if we don't come together with a common voice, we can't ouster what we currently have. In Atlanta, the epicenter of the nation's black cultural elite, Booker was likewise well received, even if students from historically black colleges and universities were not quite prepared to go all in for the New Jersey senator just yet. My impression was, I think he is a great person. I think that as a senator, he's done great work. Um, but as a presidential candidate, I feel as if I need to see more policy rather than politician. I want to see something a little more tangible that I feel as if as we progress, I'm going to see. I feel like he plays on his blackness to get votes from other black people who don't know his history in Newark and communities like Newark across America. I just feel like he plays on his blackness too much, honestly, uh, to get guilt votes from white people and to get votes from black people just because he's black, honestly. We were in Iowa uh, the last couple of days where he spoke to mostly white audiences. Uh, and here, this was a much more uh, racially mixed audience, much more black folks than you would see in your typical Iowa event. Yet he, he had the same message. Is there something about him that is uh, transcendent uh, or as they like to say, post-racial? <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't believe anything is post-racial, but I do think that he speaks to the common core of what those values represent, right? So if we're talking about voter voting rights, which represents a lot of, you know, black and brown people more than, more than anybody else, the, you know, there's still a common core there that, you know, of, of equality that I think he spoke to. And I think that that, I think that transcends race. For Cory Booker, gregarious and loquacious, master of the selfie, there is still obviously work to do to bind this fragmented electorate, black, white, and otherwise. In Atlanta, I'm David Cruz, NJTV News.